Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but I'm gonna talk about video games. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the situation going on right now uh, all over the place, I guess. The importance of video games and Elon Musk wading into the, the conversation on uh, video games and uh, DEI and uh, you know, Sweet Baby Inc. and all, you know, all the stuff that's been going on. Some people are trying to call Gamergate too. Uh, we'll talk about that. Why, why is everybody trying so hard to uh, claim video games? It's because the video games are the next big battleground, right? Like Hollywood has, has milked comics and now they're gonna milk video games. And it's, again, it's always about the importance of the platform and the audience that you're reaching. When you're an activist, you wanna reach the largest audience possible. So you get into uh, industries that have a lot of reach, uh, journalism and media, and that's that's how you spread your message. If you're, you think your calling in life is to broadcast your opinions, whether correct or incorrect, then you're gonna you're gonna gravitate toward careers that allow you to do that, which is why we have, I believe, so many people that would be self-described activists working in video games and working in uh, journalism, working in media, working in Hollywood, working in comic books because that's a, a gateway to Hollywood, right? A gateway to video games. It's kind of adjacent, and that's that's why they kind of park it there, and they get very very angry when they're called out. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about this because Elon Musk, uh, who now owns Twitter, well X, formerly Twitter, and I, I remember a lot of journos told me that it was impossible for one man to own it, but he does. Uh, he's now calling out some of this stuff going on, and he's getting all kinds of uh, blowback for it. Of course he is, but the media is very very angry. Um, about Twitter. They're still angry about Twitter. And I think this really plays into it more because, you know, I, I said before he bought it and I, I actually believe it not to pat myself on the back, but I actually did say that I thought he probably would buy it because he was making jokes about buying it. And I don't think he would make jokes about buying it unless he really had thought it through. And, um, you know, Twitter was a critical node for all these people, for all these terminally online perpetually outraged activists. Uh, this is where they connected with other journalists. This is where they would boost each other's uh, projects. This is where they would talk back channel about people and, and coordinate targets. And that has come out, you know, DMs and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, Twitter helped them because they would mute certain accounts or even ban certain accounts. And when Elon bought Twitter, he tossed a hand grenade into that ecosystem and you can see the kind of the, the domino effect, right? Like after he bought Twitter, like, boom, we just saw a bunch of media sites go down. Boom. We saw, um, you know, this thing go down or that thing go down. And a lot of it was, you know, we had all faux outrage too. all these, all these advertisers were going to pull their money. They were never going to, you know, they're all going to leave. They're going to go blue sky. They're going to go Mastodon. Then they get over there and they don't know how to use Mastodon. They were going to go someplace else. And, and they're still on Twitter. They're on Twitter now bitching about Twitter. It's so weird. Like you've got, uh, George Takei, who's one of Musk's and Trump's biggest critics. And he was like, I, I, I'm pretty sure he said he was going to leave. Uh, but he's gone there now and he's actually got his content paywalled. So you have to pay him for his tweets. You know, it's like Mark Hamill's on there. Oh, I'm going to leave. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. I, I, you know, so many people said they're going to leave and they didn't leave. I said I was going to leave and they didn't leave. Um, but the reason I said I was going to leave is I thought it was still a shitty, shitty platform, but it is getting better. I mean, in terms of the features and stuff, and I'm, I'm really kind of curious about the future of, of Twitter because it, it, or X, I guess we have to call it X now, because it seems like now it is sort of pivoting to becoming this like anything app. And I think it's going to have a lot more uh, sway over people than they wanted to admit. They thought, well, we can just walk away from Twitter and we can go build another one. No, you, you can't really. So when Elon Musk says something like this, it, it is throwing another hand grenade into the situation. So what we'll, we'll talk about this before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys. Uh, no woohoos, no woohoos. 
<laughs> this is a very somber, somber video. No, Elon Musk said, uh, this is, uh, let's see, he was answering Ashley St. Clair, who was retweeting the quartering, who who was, <laughs> so okay, let's follow this. This is Kelly Lombardi, who's the global head of marketing for Xbox, saying, raise your hand if you're not a white man and you buy video games. Yes, okay, no hate to white dudes. It's just another day in the gaming industry that minorities have to fight to prove they exist. So is there anything wrong with the statement per se? Nah. I, look, um, is a big discussion because of what's going on with Sweet Baby Inc. Okay. Uh, basically what's going on is it has become gamer dudes, gamer dudes versus everybody else, but that they're, they're, they're Assuming that all the gamer dudes, the gamer bros are all just a bunch of middle-aged white guys. And that's, that's not actually the case. A lot of old school gamers are not white. A lot of old school gamers are not straight. A lot of old school gamers are not even male, you know, but they've, they've kind of just decided that the demographic historically for video games is just solely just white dudes. And they've gone on the attack. Lots of accounts out there saying stupid shit on social media, uh, you know, running down white dudes. Uh, some people saying that they weren't running down white dudes. They're just saying, Hey, you know, uh, I don't want to work with white dudes. Other people say, no, that's actually not, not what you're saying, but whatever the deal is. Um, I will say that as a white dude, uh, which I am, by the way, some people were shocked. I was, but I am. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually, I did, I did a genetics test. And I'm actually like the whitest person on earth. I'm pretty sure I am. I'm like, I'm like 75% British and like 25% Swedish. I am like, I am like, I glow in the dark, right? I'm just like crazy white, I guess. I, I which I had no idea. Uh, but anyway, uh, that is neither here nor there because it doesn't really matter, right? It shouldn't really matter. But we are like the one demographic that you're openly allowed to say, hey, yeah, white dudes. Because if you were derogatory toward any other group of people, you know, and you're just kind of like, oh, yeah, we don't want white dudes. We don't want the white dudes. You just kind of default to like we're like the vanilla <laughs> it's like it's just like everybody just assumes it's like oh yeah it's white dudes and then everybody else and it's like look historically have white dudes probably been the biggest uh uh demographic for video games um it depends it depends if you go back and you watch some old atari commercials they had entire families playing games uh, I remember one commercial in particular they had a, a black woman and her daughter playing games together and and that they were the only people in the video and that was like 1981, you know? So, I mean, I think it did shift. I think the nineties definitely things shifted a little bit, but I digress. Anyway, the point being, there is definitely uh, a sentiment in video games that's being ramped up against gamer bros, white dudes, whatever you want to call us, even those of us that aren't white. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so the quarter and calls out and said, yeah, this is the global head of marketing for Xbox. And we're seeing a lot of, Comments like this, I think, probably to make sure everybody knows they're in lockstep and in support of companies like Sweet Baby Inc. Um, and again, I, I want to be clear, just uh, you know, being uh, having libertarian leanings myself, that I think you can work with anybody you want to work with. Um, you know, I don't think it's legal though to be openly. Uh, you know, to openly say you're not going to hire a certain kind of person. I mean, you might do it on the down low, but I don't know if you're legally allowed to say that. Like, we don't want anybody like this. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, I think if you're putting a team together, you work with who you click with. And that may include white dudes, may not include white dudes. But yeah, to just openly be like, yeah, we don't want white dudes. That's, that's not a good, that's not a, it's not a good look. Uh, you know, especially with everything going on right now, but that's why they're doing it. They want to make sure you know that they're, they're the good guys. This is a massive problem and it's widespread throughout the entire gaming industry, says Ashley St. Clair, to which Elon Musk says it should not be acceptable for any company in the gaming industry to be racist and sexist against white guys. Well, it's been that way for a while and it's been that way in Hollywood for a while. And it's been that way, even other white guys, like, this is so weird. Like a lot of the, it's like white guys throwing other white guys under the bus. Like you hear all the, and it's like white women throwing everybody else under the bus. It's so weird. Like, oh yeah, you know, I, I've, uh, you know, there are just too many, too many white dudes like us. Okay. So like D and D, I did that video on D and D 
to celebrate the 50th anniversary of D&D, what do they do? Complain about all the, the middle-aged white guys that worked on it from the Midwest, from the flyover states. And that's how they celebrate D&D. By, there was no reason to even bring that up. The, the, to, you could talk about Gary Gygax without bringing up his ethnicity, his, his gender, his location. You know what I'm saying? Like there was no reason to do that other than to be like, oh yeah, we know they're a bunch of bigots by default. Yeah. But this was a white guy saying it. The two white guys are talking about how problematic it was that there are too many white guys in gaming and you know why they're doing it. Trying to save their own asses. Well, I'm one of the good ones. It's kind of like, do you ever see the, uh, the one doctor who short they had before the 50th anniversary with Paul McGann's doctor, and uh, the woman's like, I hate Time Lords. And he's like, well, I'm one of the nice ones. And that's that's kind of what it feels like. Well, I'm one of the nice ones. I'm one of the nice white guys. Don't don't cancel me, bro. But cancel everybody else that identifies like me. It's kind of weird. So, yeah, Elon's getting all kinds of pushback. Of course he is. Of course he is. Grum says, Grums, who was on the channel before, says Elon Musk does it again. Highlights Microsoft's global marketing manager's racism against white male gamers, keeps fighting the good fight, gamers, reinforcements have arrived. Uh, I don't think it's going to work anymore. I think all the websites that push this and all the companies that push this are going to get gone. Uh, in fact, I think we are going to go back. I, I love this. I love this meme. This is coming from uh, Undoomed. I don't know if they made it or not, but uh, talking about how games were in the 90s and uh, how they made games and they made them with skeleton crews and they made them light. So pretty much anybody with a potato computer could run it. And now everything is bloated and everything has to be online. Everything's got microtransactions and the developers are doing weird crap. And uh, I pointed out that, yeah, we got a lot of good indie games you know, coming out. So I think what, what is going to happen is gamers are going to pivot away from the AAA titles, which are infested with these kinds of people. And they're going to go back to uh, this kind of stuff. Because at one point in time, Warcraft was done by a plucky startup, right? I remember that. I remember Warcraft being like, oh, Blizzard. I've never heard of them. Oh, wait, no, they're that company that did that Superman game that, for Super Nintendo, right? Yeah. Um, Charles says, as a white guy myself, I don't know anyone that whines more than you. Yet black, brown, and Muslim people are harassed on this platform every day, but it's white guys Elon's bitch ass is concerned about. Uh, I don't think anybody, I, I I will go on record saying this. I don't think anybody should be discriminated against. I think the most qualified person for any position should get that job. White privilege and white male fragility daily. I first learned about CRT. My gut reaction was this is going to make everyone more racist because I understood the implications. We see that prediction come true today. Um, yeah, there was a, there was a big fight on the view with, uh, there was a guy who wrote a book and, uh, some of the view hosts were fighting with him because he's basically like, yeah, you're totally misunderstanding what Martin Luther King was saying. <laughs> and we need to look beyond just the skin color of, of people. And again, I a hundred percent believe that the most qualified person for the job should get the job. Absolutely. But I don't think running down a large portion of your audience, uh, to gain a new audience. And we saw this with comics and we saw it with Hollywood, it doesn't work, right? Just put out your damn product, shut your mouth. That's all you got to do. You don't have to be like, well, we're putting this out here because we think that games should be for more than just white dudes. It's like games always were for more than just white dudes. Always, always going way back. Like I said, Atari days, but you know, whatever. Uh, David Levitt, who is, this is a guy who was bitching about the toothbrush, I think. Um, Award-winning multimedia journalist uh, for CBS Yahoo Examiner. He plays board games. Unfortunately, the people harassing Kelly lacked the intelligence to understand she was celebrating diversity and were attacking her because they don't want diversity. It's no secret that Elon Musk is against DEI and him retweeting it only compounded the amount of racist attacks on her. So she's protected now. I mean, this is this is hardly I mean, I will be honest, this is hardly the worst take I've heard. There are several takes out there that fly out like we don't want no white dudes on our team. We don't want no white dudes in gaming. We don't feel safe around white dudes. Uh, so this is hardly the uh, the worst. It's everywhere and everything that they don't hide it. Uh, they're talking about uh, Telefilm Canada. Uh, when are we going to grow past looking at skin color? Let's fight for great stories and games not being $80 on launch, not being able to fucking launch because of bugs. That is true. I remember when completed games shipped. 
Um, but here we go. Elon Musk's burner account. Elon Musk, white man who built his wealth on the privilege afforded to him by the most racist country of the latter half of the 20th century with the greatest wealth inequality between races ever and who tweet, treats women only as breeding partners plays victim of racism and sexism. That's fucking rich. So is he, by the way. He's, he's very rich. That's why he owns Twitter now. Xbox management is getting whooped in the ass by Elon Musk. That is true. Your desperation is a sign. Your demographic is declining geographically. By all means, keep going. That's not That's not what that means. Poor white guys. So Gamergate wasn't enough. Now we have to add disguised racism. Oh, my God. Uh, I've been screaming from the mountaintops. Uh, fixed it for you. It should not be acceptable for any company in the gaming industry to be racist and sexist. That actually, I would, I would say that I would say that I would say that's probably, but there is, there's one group that is being disproportionately maligned by a lot of people working in the industry right now. I mean, it is like if you Google like, you know, uh, black girl, well, if you Google black girls now, you're going to get a whole nother thing. But like, if you, you know what I'm saying? Like if you Google other minority groups you're not going to get the same uh, and and you're not going to find a bunch of tweets talking about how they need to be, you know, kept out of gaming or, you know what I'm saying? It is, it is it's disproportionate, but that's okay. You know, um, it's, it's, it's fine. We're, we're used to it. This is the way things have been for the last couple of years. It's just how it is. Um, it should not be acceptable for anyone in the gaming industry to be racist and sexist against anyone. I agree with that. I do agree with that. Should be acceptable to ban free speech on a free speech app. Yet here we are, Moon Douche. Is that his name now? Is Moon Douche? Uh, it's much worse than discrimination against their most loyal demographic group. Uh, she messed up by not adding the context to what made her post begin with. Boogie's hot take about gaming should be catered to white men because more white men play games as a context. Uh, he's now the lead of the post. Gamergate 2 sucks. They're really trying to. Uh, they're really trying to get Gamergate 2 to start. But look, this is what it's about. At the end of the day, games have a lot of influence. In fact, The Rap just did an article. And it's so weird that, you know, it's not weird. I'm sure it's intentional. But they're fighting over games because games are the next big thing. With superheroes slumping, Hollywood turns to video games. And, of course, you know, Disney's big announcement was Fortnite. Fortnite. They said the superhero genre isn't dead, but now they're investing on uh, video games. They said all eyes are on making video games, a $56.6 billion industry in 2022, the next movie temple IP. Despite failing for the better part of three decades to successfully adapt a video game, Hollywood is banking on it. Mario Brothers, Sonic, Five Nights at Freddy's, they all did very well. So what's going to happen is those movies did well. Because the people that worked on them actually liked the franchises and respected the franchises. What's going to happen is we're going to get a lot of these people come in and be like, well, you know, we like the name, but we don't like the audience. Let's change everything. And it's not going to do well. And it's going to be like, those bigots didn't watch our movie. What's wrong with them? Not only do video game movies cater to the primary interest of younger generations, but those making decisions at a studio level today grew up playing next generation video games. That's true. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, which we're jumping right to shadow, which I don't freaking understand, but okay. Borderlands is dead on arrival. The studio got sold for a fraction of what Embracer paid for it before the movie comes out. The movie looks like trash. It looks like Guardians of the Galaxy. And like, why is everybody so damn old? I don't understand why all the characters are old. Minecraft movie. Good luck with that. According to a survey of 3,500 fans conducted by fandom and released in March, 67% of fans are spraying, spending the same or more time consuming content or playing video games. But their behavior is shifting. 33% are spending less time on cable or in theaters. And the number one activity they're switching to is gaming. Because that's what Gen Z and millennials like. That's what's going on. It's Look, gaming is a battleground, and it's they're not going to give it up easily. Like, I think comics, I think things are cooling off in comics now because they're like, oh, yeah, the superhero movie thing's done. Okay, well, let's go back to gaming now. That's what I think it was. I think it started out like the, the original Gamergate was because gaming was the hottest thing. And then Marvel movies were doing really well. 
And then it was like, well, comics was like the hottest thing. You had to get in because it had the most influence. And now we're back to now we're back to gaming because the, they blew up the superhero thing. Because again, why did why did superhero movies fail? Because all the shit that they did in the comics, all the activism fueled bullshit that they did in the comics, they did it in the movies and they failed. You know, all the stuff that didn't work in the comics, the audiences rejected. They did it in the movies and the movies failed. The Disney Plus shows failed. Uh, you know, everything crumbled and they're going to do the same thing to gaming. I'm sure they will. They're already angling for it. All these people that are losing their jobs at these AAA studios, they're all going to push to probably get jobs in Hollywood working on these video game movies. And if Hollywood's smart, which we know they're not collectively, but if they were, they would they would reject it. They'd be like, you know what? Let's just stay true to the IP. You know, stay true to the IP. That's all you got to do. It's real easy to make gamers and comic fans and nerds happy. All you got to do is just stay true to the IP. You don't have to exclude anyone. And I do mean anyone. But when you say let's not exclude anyone, that means even the people you don't like. You know, I'm just saying. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later.